Today we'll be talking about drinking or sake in Japan. In my last video, I had talked about what I considered to be the most profound Japanese phrase, Ichigo Ichi E, which directly translates to one life, one encounter. Today I have a couple of bottles of premium Japanese sake, which are called Ichigo Ichi E. So today we'll talk about sake, different ways to drink sake, and at the end, we will taste these special Ichigo Ichi E sakes and reflect on life. Now how Japanese is that? We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get going. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, the man in Japan. If this is your first time to watch my videos, welcome. On this channel, we talk about life and living in Japan. If you like the video and content, please hit that like button and subscribe. So here are the two bottles of Ichigo Ichie Sake that my high school classmate, Jeffrey Natori, had sent to me. The brewery's name is Kura, and it's located in Fukui Prefecture along the Japan Sea Coast. What I found really interesting was the rice that they used to make Ichigo Ichie Sake was not the Koshi Hikari grain from the Hokuriku era, which I love so much and always buy, but was grown in Hyogo Prefecture, which is famous for some of the best sake rice in Japan. These two bottles of Ichigo Ichie Sake have the premium rank of Junmai Dai Ginjo. Junmai means pure Japanese rice, and in this case, 100% Japanese sake rice was used to produce this sake. There are only three basic ingredients used in the production of sake. Rice, water, and koji, which is a kind of mold and yeast that is used to produce sake. No other additives are used. And the dai ginjo part means that the rice grains are milled or ground down to a certain percentage where most of the rice, the outside layers, which are protein and fats, are ground away. So basically you have what is left is the purest form of the rice grain made up of primarily starch. And that is because the starch is what is turned into sugar, which is turned into sake. Consequently, the smaller you ground the rice grains down, the purer the rice is for sake, but it also means you will need more rice to make the sake, and so the cost also goes up. Any sake with the words Jumai Dai Ginjo written on the label of the bottle is considered to be very high level premium sake and will not be cheap, but it should be very smooth and enjoyable. So let's try these two bottles of Ichigo Ichie Sake. These are the two levels of the premium Ichigo Ichie Sake from Kura. For most people, the image of drinking sake is drinking the hot sake known as atsukang, especially in the winter when it is cold. You may have seen the different tokkuris and ochokos, the small sake cups, that are the usual image of drinking sake. These ceramic serving containers and cups are usually for hot sake and to pour for one another is an old Japanese custom that represents mutual dependence. I pour for you and you pour for me and we depend and de rely on each other. And this builds the relationship and trust and, and support, which basically also conveys the message of okage sama de, or thanks to you, I am. I'm healthy, or I'm doing well, or I'm successful, or I'm happy. When I first came to Japan in my university days, we used to love this custom of pouring sake for one another. If the person you, had, you are drinking with had drank some of their sake, it was your responsibility to fill their cup up again. And if you drank from your cup of sake, it was their responsibility and they would refill your cup. So the more you wanted to drink, the more you would drink because they would fill up your little ochoko. This would continue and be repeated throughout the evening. When you're young, it's a lot of fun and it can easily escalate where you start drinking more and more and it could many times reach a point where it can get quite wild and crazy. Just prepare yourself for a painful hangover the next morning if you drink too much. Sake is stronger than wine. Wine is usually about 12% alcohol, whereas sake averages about 16%. So just be forewarned, I've paid the price of the escalating sake drinking custom many more times than I want to remember or even can remember. For premium sake, sake rice is used. Sake rice is different from regularly eaten white rice. The sake rice stalks are taller and the grain size is 30% larger. The sake rice grains have less protein and fat, which is really what you want because after milling down the grains, you only really want the starch because the starch is what turns into sugar and then into alcohol, which is the sake. Thus, drinking too much sake is like drinking too much wine. Both have a large amount of sugar in it and thus the hangovers can be actually very quite punishing. But true sake drinkers always say that by heating up the sake, you will burn away some of the alcohol and affect the taste of the flavor profile of the sake. So they drink their sake chill. Sometimes you see at some drinking establishments or izakayas, the square wooden sake drinking box. It looks kind of fancy and kind of exotic, 
but it's not really that practical. I've never really understood why this square wooden box became the sake cup from the past. Because the box has 90 degree corners and does not fit on your mouth. And so you almost always spill some of the sake out when you drink like this or like this. Another way of drinking and using the wooden sake cup is what is called the masu style, which is where a small, taller, thin glass sits in the square sake box and the server will fill the glass to the brim and over and purposely overflow the glass, which then the excess sake spills into the box and you know, almost to the top. And it looks really fancy and like you're getting a lot for your money. But the practicality is that when you take the sake out of the box to drink, that it's gonna drip all over your lap or on the table. And when you're finished drinking the glass, you're supposed to drink the sake that's in the box. And again, the same problem with drinking it this way or this way, it's very difficult to, to drink and it spills out either on the table or on you. So it's really kind of a waste, motai nai I call it. But anyway, this is another thing that you will see. So it's great for optics and photos, but not really practical. Recently, you see a lot of places serve the chilled sake in simple smaller glasses like this. Different bars, zakayas, and drinking establishments like to use different shaped glasses and ceramic cups, sometimes also made from different materials like bronze or different kinds of metal. This is to give the customer a unique and unforgettable experience. As for drinking cold or chilled sake, or reishu as it's called, these days, although you see a variety of smaller glass cups like this, Jeff Naturi told me that it is better to use a larger white wine glass like this with a big bowl so you can smell the aromas fully that also enhance the taste and the psychological anticipation of the sake. And many people believe that this is the best way to taste and drink sake. And psychologically, it seems that it will taste better after you smell the aromas within the glass. To taste and sip, you want to first smell and inhale the aromas of sake, which are or many times said to give off a more fruity aroma of apples, melons, or bananas. And some even have a more wild outdoor aroma of grasses or moss, grains, or like a forest. And when it comes to actual tasting, some sakes are light, dry, and quick. Like many breweries on the coastal areas who purposely brew the sake light and quick off the tongue with very little aftertaste because they want the customer to fully enjoy the full body of, and flavor of the seafood. They don't want the sake to be too strong or the taste to linger. It's interesting that this Ichigo Ichie sake comes from Fukui Prefecture in the Hokuriku region along the Japan Sea Coast. I would have guessed that this would be a much lighter and very dry with a quick finish. But this Ichigo Ichie sake has a more long drawn out finish. It's quite earthy. As, as some people might say, it has kind of a big bone taste that lingers as the aroma rises up into your nasal area after you swallow. This lingering and rising aroma is an important quality of, of good wines. And as John Gottner, the famous sake guy, calls this a returning aroma. John Gottner is the true sake master probably the only non-Japanese that has ever been accepted and acclaimed as a true sake master here in Japan. A link to his website is in the description below. But not all sakes have this returning aroma quality, so it just depends on your preference and what you're used to. So for me, this Ichigo Ichie sake is more weighty. It seems to have a hearty, strong flavor profile. I would guess that this type of sake might go well with miso-flavored salmon, or maybe a teriyaki style chicken or meat. But that's only my novice opinion. In short, the best sake to drink will all depend on your preference, whether it's sweet or dry, lingering or not, full body or light. And it depends really on what you're going to eat with your sake. Although the true sake drinkers always drink their sake chilled, John Gottner also said that warming it up, known as atsukan, also is very good and that it's completely up to you and what you like. So if you want to drink your sake warm, do it. Some people heat up their atsukan in the microwave for a minute or so. Others heat up water in a pot and put the tokkuri, the sake server, in the hot water until it's ready to drink. Don't boil the water, it should be hot but not boiling. The challenge with putting the tokkuri in a pot of hot water is knowing when it's ideally hot enough but not too hot to drink. In Japan, you can buy a thermometer to measure the temperature so you could just have it in there and sitting there or you just have to keep like tasting as it comes out and to see if it's hot enough but be careful when you pick up your tokkuri it could be really hot and you may want to use those protective cloth gloves or 
or pads or warmers when picking them up. Also be careful when you drink the sake as I have burned my tongue so many times, especially when it was heated in the microwave, so be careful. So let us toast to the way of life of Ichigo Ichie. To appreciate every moment with friends and family, new acquaintances and encounters. To be in the now and completely present. For we only have this one moment and one time that can never be repeated again. With the pandemic ongoing and so much change and challenges, more than ever, we should contemplate the simplicity and beauty of life, being in the moment. And happy is not about what's on social media, not on Facebook, nor Instagram, nor YouTube. It is the simplest form of appreciation of being completely present in the moment with those we love and care for. So here's a toast to the path of Ichigo Ichie. One life, one encounter. Kanpai!